Karate friends, and happy Halloween. Welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today we're going to be talking about some of the worst omens from ancient Rome and Greece. Now this is the ancient world we're talking about, right? So there are a million omens that I could choose from. I'm just gonna focus on some of my favorites or that I think are the creepiest. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments. And I got most of mine from this great article by Mike Pope who talks about when statues bleed. So really creepy, great stuff. I'll leave the info for that and let's get started. So a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you today is not just one omen by itself. No, it's a whole list of omens that go together when something really bad is about to go down. So the first example that I have is from the Argonautica, which is a novel or an epic about Jason and the Argonauts, obviously, and they're in a very dire situation, and the author compares it to some sort of really apocalyptic scenario. So he says, as when men roam like lifeless ghosts through a city, awaiting the outbreak of war or plague or an immense downpour of the kind that washes away the countless labors of oxen, either when statues sweat spontaneously and run with blood and bellowings are heard in sacred precincts, or when at midday the sun brings on night from the sky and the stars shine brightly through the air. So there you get that something apocalyptic or really terrible is about to happen and there's eclipses and you get a reference to the statues bleeding, which is just, you know, it's beautiful, great stuff. Next one is from the Thebaid, which is about the Theban Wars, a little bit less well known. And again, it's sort of a list of really terrible omens and it goes through gods, or the statues of gods sweating again. So we get that, you know, them dripping, very disturbing. Uh, there's a river, Dersi, that is turned to blood basically. And then there's also a reference to the Sphinx uh, speaking again among her rocks. So obviously the Sphinx is cool and has all kinds of conspiracy theories uh, about around that. So it's really cool to hear the Sphinx talking. My next example is from Livy's history. So these omens all happen in and around Rome. A bunch of temples <laughs> are struck by lightning and the people of Satricum were no less alarmed by two serpents that glided into the temple, actually through the doorway. From Antium, it was reported that ears of grain appeared to the reapers to be blood stained. At Cairo, a pig had been born with two heads and a lamb that was at the same time male and female. And at Alba, they said that two suns were seen, and at Fregelli, that light had appeared in the night, and an ox was said to have spoken in the country about Rome, and the altar of Neptune in the Flaminian Circus to have been dripping with sweat. Next is from Herodotus' history. This is about Croesus, and if you know anything about him, he is one ill-fortuned fella, let me tell you. And this omen is particularly strange. Meantime, it chanced that snakes began to swarm in the outer part of the city. And when they appeared, the horses would ever leave their accustomed pasture and devour them. And when Croesus saw this, he thought it to be a portent. And so it was. So horses eating snakes, yeesh. Final example is again from Livy's history, and this is probably the worst omen on my list, uh, but for interesting reasons. So I'll read it to you first and then I'll explain. There followed another prodigy for telling the grandeur of their empire, the Romans. A human head, its features intact, was found, so it said, by the men who were digging for the foundations of the temple. This appearance plainly foreshadowed that here was to be the citadel of the empire and the head of the world. So the Romans find this head, this disembodied head, I guess it isn't rotten, so that's good, you know, you can still see the face and everything, but they find this head, and from that they decide that, oh yes, we are going to be the head of the world. To me, when I find a head, I take that as a bad omen. So I think that this is the worst omen in that if you were going to give the Romans, like, a good sign, why a head? I don't, I don't understand, but... There you have it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. A giant thank you as always to subscribers and patrons. And I hope you have a lovely fall and Halloween, and I hope to see you again next week. Kyote.